Hi, everyone. So I've been working on a project um, since the beginning of the year called The Answer is Never, and it was a, uh, it is a skateboarding game. Um, here's the website for it. Um, it has a little of the information. It's theanswerisnever.com. It has some uh, development information here about what the story is and, uh, you know, some of the, the artwork or whatever that I've been uh, doing for the game so far and uh, it's turning out really nice um, but I didn't want to go forward on any of the uh, artwork stuff until I had the prototype kind of worked out and a lot of the movement so the game's art style I'm working on some concept art for it it's, it's cartoony and stylized very similar to the uh, I want to say the way the new Back to the Future Wii, Wii game that came out a few years back looked uh, with kind of exaggerated characters and it's set back in the 1980s and in no way is this game um, a realistic skateboarding simulation skateboarding is more of your um, it's one of the core themes of the story and kind of how you get around the world and how people identify with you and and how you interact with people. Um, think the old Skater Die 2 game on the NES and that's very much a heavy inspiration on this. So the, one of the core aspects, um, this is one of my other devlog videos here, one of the core aspects of this is the, the top-down um, gameplay from this camera and this is pretty much what that view looks like. Um, and that's how you pretty much spend most of the time getting around the world and doing stuff in the story. And that prototype's actually working except for, you know, some of the tricks like grinds and stuff like that. Um, I wanted to make it fun even though there's a story. I wanted to be able to make it sort of like a sandbox where you could go around this entire city or high school or mall and just skate and trick off of everything and do fun stuff that's surprising and a little different each time you do it. Right, so the prototype was working solid. And then I had the idea that, very similar to Skate or Die 2, you would enter kind of ramp competitions or skating competitions where you would earn some money and so forth. And uh, my first, this was a few months back, maybe in February, one of my first prototypes of getting a ramp um, working in Unity and the player kind of gliding along it naturally without just flying off or just looking really wonky on the ramp and uh, it was really felt really defeating um, that I couldn't get it to work right until yesterday when I came upon a tweet here by uh, a developer who's working on Twitter here who's working on a skateboarding game and he had a capsule kind of moving up and down these uh, these quarter pipes and it made me think and go back and look at my uh, prototype. He's got a really cool projects going on here so you can go and uh, you know follow him on Twitter or whatever and his stuff's just really good and really realistic and luckily I'm not competing with that because I'm not going for anything uh, realistic. I just I think that's beyond my engineering skills but I went back in and started to play with my my, my uh, capsule here which is how it started this morning. It's just this capsule and then I went and put the, uh, the main and uh, protagonist characters, a female. So I went and put the female dummy in, and let me just show you, um, without some talking here, what I got working. And it feels feels solid enough to say that we could probably do a ramp mode. So she glides along the ramp very naturally. Um, even the dropping in looks looks realistic. The momentum's real, so I let go of the keyboard, and it literally comes to a an actual stop which you'd be really surprised how difficult this is to get really smooth natural momentum and movement up and down slopes how difficult that is in unity and I'm just using this little uh, sphere collider here so we're not really going to be colliding with anything as the player is pretty much the only player there is up and down movement and that's bugged right now I need the character to kind of turn and right now the character turns and hits the invisible wall. One of the cool things that I have going on in the code is this kind of lean and I can tweak those values with the um, with the tilt angle and the character will lean even more. Um, we want to keep it looking natural and I can also reverse it. So if I think when the player is at a certain angle like I don't think I want the player leaning when the player is on the ground like this. But that's okay. It looks okay if you're on a ramp. Um, but I would detect if the player is at a certain angle and say only lean 
when the player goes up a ramp at a certain angle, right? And I can also reverse the tilt if I want it to go a different way. Like, say the skater is sort of pumping, and this looks unnatural because this is not the way you would you would move on the ramp. Um, and so some of the things that allowed me to do this was basically to solve my broken prototype, the first thing I did was just apply a down force on the rigid body, pushing it down, almost like a pseudo-gravity. And uh, I have absolutely no problem sharing this code when I'm done. It's probably really nasty right now because I'm just throwing in variables and I'm uh, throwing in all kinds of stuff and some of it's unused, right? So it's kind of dirty. And uh, so really what I'm doing is just these um, typical grabbing references to the components and the update. We're constantly aligning our player and we're checking the input, right? So this is just your typical um, input based off of the keyboard. And eventually if we're using an Xbox controller, I can uh, we can set these H and V values to that using some kind of Boolean that says keyboard or Xbox. I've done that a hundred times before. Um, so this is the tilt. And uh, if the reverse tilt, then we just reverse those values. Um, and then this is where we rotate around X and Z. No rotation around Y yet. And uh, you'll notice that we're doing the rotation on the player root. So I use this little tiny sphere here, and it has a rigid body on it. So it's a physics object, and we don't really want to rotate the physics object. So what we're doing the rotation on is this... Um, basically this center of mass and it works really well so everything that I want to rotate with the ramp or the world uh, we rotate on that center of mass transform versus trying to physically rotate the uh, the rigid body you don't want to apply a manual rotation or translation to that and then in um, fixed update we're doing the rotation I probably move this out of fixed update and put it into a regular update function but right now it's not jittering and causing any issues. So, hey, if there aren't any physics issues and it's not a performance issue right now, I'm leaving it. Um, this is just a, a ground check here, right, which we go down here and do a typical raycast down from the raycast transform, which is this little, okay, where is it? It's here, down here at the bottom of the board. And you'll see a little debug when I hit play. Um, that's just shooting down from that, and it's the raycast stops where it hits the collision. And that's what we're using for the tilting, is it's reading that raycast and going up along these edges here and kind of interpolating based on this, uh, where is this? Uh, the rotate speed right here, 10, is sort of that smoothing interpolation. So right now, the board actually sort of goes into the ramp a little. And I'm not, I'm not losing my mind about that because it is definitely adjustable when you do this. And then the board, well, maybe it didn't read it. Maybe some value set and start, and it's just not updated. But, but when you rotate the speed, it interpolates, so you sacrifice. It interpolates less, so you sacrifice a little bit of the the smoothness. But the board doesn't go into the. Uh, it doesn't go into the uh, the ramp as much, so it's going to be a balance. And then I'm um, also commented out a bit of code where I'm going to do sort of a positional offset instead of just rotation. So maybe when we hit a certain angle, we kind of fudge the uh, the position up in Y locally. And I'm okay with fudging it because I'm not passing this pro project off to anyone else. And this ramp aspect is can almost be treated as a mini game to the main game this will load an entirely different scene an entirely different type of character and an entire different set of assets maybe some of them reused from the uh, the original game so our ground check happens um, then this is just our movement of the player add relative force based on those h and v values in the keyboard um, velocity x i think this is some nasty leftover stuff I'm almost positive it is from where I was trying to constrain the uh, the movement. No, it wouldn't because that movement was in Z. I'm not really sure what this is quite yet. I can look around. It has to tell faster traveling back and forth. This is something that we're not using anymore. Okay, well we could remove that. Not a problem. And uh, so that's what I mean when the code is kind of nasty. There's just unused stuff in it. Um, and this is the gravity downforce stuff, and this is what actually made 
it move realistically on the ramp was just applying. It seems like the default gravity in Unity is just, I don't know, it just doesn't work out of the box very realistically. Maybe it does, and I'm not setting the mass values properly. I'm not sure. And then this is the Align um, Ramp Player, which is a raycast going down, looking at the current normal back up. Um, it's saying that current normal lets lerp between the current one and where it's hitting the ramp by that rotate speed and then by the uh, the time since the last frame and then um, make a quaternion out of that right and if we're on the ground take that rotated transform which is the root and then tilt it right and I probably don't have to go by um, frame time there again and then this is going to be our case if we're not on the ground and we've flown off the top of the ramp and there's a whole host there's a whole host of other things that I have to deal with when the player hits the slip. What determines, you know, how they just, you know, if the difference, the difference in do they just keep going up onto the coping and then up onto the platform, kind of like it is now, what determines if they fly straight up versus just riding up onto the top of the platform? Right now, she'll just go straight up onto the platform. Boom, done. Right? But if I want her to fly up and just go straight up, I probably want to remove the player's the forces on the physics and then it's that point just kind of um, play an animation or or do some kind of rotation in the air and I don't know if that's you hit the space bar when you hit that coping and the coping is this section right here it's usually on a ramp like this a metal pipe do I want them to hit the space bar to trick off of that and then fly up in the air or just maybe it's based on are they holding down the left and right the horizontal input and if they are just go up onto the platform and if they aren't when they hit the top let go then they fly up maybe it's input based I don't know I don't know the smartest way to tackle that quite yet um, and speaking of animations I didn't really want to do any animations so I can't animate but I'd like to do this procedurally and so right now we are placing her everything pretty much to the board procedurally and what I like about this is I can take the root and I can put weight on this and uh, I'm thinking we can use some kind of rigid body with a joint chain and this way she can pump on the ramp normally when you're going up and down you use your body and the distribution of your weight and we could do that um, it would be pretty awesome so I'm using IK for that but I'm not using Unity's uh, built-in IK I'm actually using um, this right here. It's been deprecated off the asset store, so you might have to look for final IK or something like that, or look through your past purchases, which is what I did. I looked back in what I had previously purchased or grabbed, and luckily a long time ago I had grabbed this one. And it's as simple as this looks like. It just wants a chain of at least two joints, and then the target that you move around, and then the elbow or the knee on the in my case on the leg um, is how you kind of you know orient that um, joint here and you can see like you can do some kind of crazy stuff and the IK stuff's pretty pretty good he has it named in his system for arms but clearly I'm using it uh, on the legs and so your target is just where you want to plant the end of that joint chain I'm gonna use it um, on the arms and if you have weird orientation issues which I definitely did by default I had to go in here and kind of swivel these values and make sure I got them all oriented right and I just think it's because this is not your typical move the character and face the character down Z game you're actually looking down Z with the camera moving everything uh, back on the X traditionally your character would be rotated facing down the Z and that would be the proper way to do that but in the case of a game where you're looking down the Z everything gets kind of swapped around so that's a really neat package. Uh, maybe reach out to this guy. He has uh, an email link, and he's still active with other projects on the asset store, and ask him how you can get a hold of this. Or if, would you kindly, sir, put this up on GitHub if it isn't already, because it's just a really good, simple, free IK solution. And that's what I'm using. I honestly, I really don't want to hand animate anything. This character, when I brought her in, she literally has no animation import and I'd like to really keep it that way everything I'm gonna do where she does tricks and kicks her feet out feet out and even if you're doing kick flips and ollies and all of that stuff I want everything to be procedural I want to move 
all of those feet and everything based on maybe animation curves, moving the targets for the IK or something like that. Um, but, you know, thanks to Kevin there on Twitter, I kind of got really reinvigorated on this project and really excited and happy. I, I don't need a realistic simulation. I just need something fun. Um, and I think I'm working towards that. This is this is last night and this morning. So if I just keep kind of moving at that progress on this, um, it might actually turn out to be something. Anyway, all right, I don't want to keep you guys too long in this development blog. Um, if you're interested, uh, I don't know if I have it up. I'm on, it's on um, itch.io as well. Um, the theme of the game kind of changed. This was initially her, um, but this was based in a modern time period, and so I had modeled and done artwork for a modern skateboard and a modern girl. And then the theme changed, and, you know, I wanted to go back to the late 80s, early 90s. I still have her up, but um, this is definitely going to be in the late 80s, late 90s. So if you're curious about following it or something like that, um, man, just uh, just check, check me out. And if you use Facebook or whatever, um, go give a like on Facebook. And I also have a Twitter for that. And there's even like a Unity um, forum post where I come in and I talk about using Substance Painter. And that's kind of the style that I'm going for. I was putting up a lot of color palettes and, and stuff like that. Um, and this is one of those things where you know, prototype first and white box and gray box stuff and don't create final artwork before you've solidified. And I've been doing this for about 10 years, just game development in general, and you think that I would know not to do the art first. Um, but the problem is, is I'm an artist. Um, I'm not really much of a programmer or anything like that. I'm a technical artist and an artist, so I just love creating the art. And I can do it kind of fast. But then I end up having to throw away. Like that character is, I'm not going to throw her away, but it's, it's she's pretty kind of useless at this point. Um, I don't really have anything to use her use her for. So anyway, um, thank you for watching and taking an interest in this. If you have any questions and are trying to get a player to move on ramps like this, let me know. Comment down in the video description, all right? Have a good day.